Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at Linux Mint 19, which is codenamed Tara. Now I know in the past I've not been so keen on Linux Mint, particularly with the way they used to withhold the updates by default. Happily though, they have changed the way they're doing that now. Kernel updates are enabled by default. Although you do have the option to withhold kernel updates, but you can choose that yourself. A new user coming to the system who won't necessarily change the settings will have it set up in an appropriately secure manner. Beautiful, perfect. And not only that, on the security side, there have also been improvements in the speed, look and feel. So I have to say, I'm actually quite impressed with Linux Mint 19. And it's totally changed the way I think about the operating system. At least they've stayed with a consistent look and feel unlike another Linux distribution that it is based on, Ubuntu. And talking about Ubuntu, they have gone down the route of saying we're not going to track or look at what you're doing. No privacy issues at all with Mint, but I do seem to have received a bit of abuse about that. But hey, never mind. Let's start where I normally do and look at the memory usage. So it's about 670 meg of RAM at boot up, although that is with welcome screen open, but you can see where I've retested it, it does drop a bit. We do have Linux kernel 4.15. The desktop I've gone for is the Cinnamon version, that is Cinnamon 3.8. One change you'll find with this release of Linux Mint 19 is there is no longer a KDE edition. However, you can still choose between the Cinnamon, Mate and XFCE versions. I've opted for a darker theme in this release. I thought why not put it through its tests and see what it does look like in a dark theme. The light theme is perfectly fine. There's been improvements to the HIDPI support for high definition displays. Applications now open considerably faster. You can set the maximum volume beyond 100%. So we just go into sound settings. Into settings, you can change the maximum volume you would like. So by default, it is 100%, but yeah, you can go beyond that and then set the volume to whatever you want it to. So yeah, the volume control, I can now set right up to 150%. KDE applications now look a lot better. For example, if I open up Kate, and take a look at the menus here. Yeah, that looks good. And this is a nice seamless look out of the box. Although I can't say the same for KDN Live. And that is while I'm using the dark theme. So that is a bit of a cheat really. Yeah, it doesn't look quite so good here. But the light theme though, looks perfectly fine. Yeah, it looks a bit messy with the dark theme. Yeah, definitely not a good look at all. As I mentioned, the update manager now shows all updates by default. We do get a warning about creating a system snapshot, as it will allow you to restore to a previous working condition. Yeah, that's not actually a bad alternative to just withholding the updates. In fact, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So if you happen to install a kernel that does break drivers on your system, for example, Wi-Fi drivers, they have the possibility of breaking between kernel updates, then yeah, you've got the option of rolling back. You can disable kernel updates and security updates, all this note here, it is recommended to show and apply all available updates. Only disable the options when troubleshooting. Yeah, that's a bit of a difference than before, isn't it? But no, I'm, I'm not going to complain. That is a good alternative, what they have provided here. And going back to the file manager, Nemo, it now generates thumbnails for files up to 32 gig in size. USB copying is now a bit faster. And there's improvements to the speed on the search file results. And you can also save searches. For example, I know I showed you a folder with Tom and Jerry videos there, but if I were to do a search for Tom, I'll already save this result and it comes up, yeah, that quick. But even if I was to do a search from scratch, yeah, it's still pretty quick. <laughs> the default browser of choice is Firefox. Let's look at how the application snaps to the sides of the screen. So we have halves and we do have quadrants. It's not very obvious at the top. It does make this squeaking noise when it snaps the application to size, which, <laughs> talking about squeaking noises, Jerry the mouse. Yeah, I would prefer it did full screen though when I went to the top, but whatever. The functionality is here. A double click maximizes the application size. The software manager has seen some improvements as well. I believe it was that if you select a category and then did a search, it would stick to results from that specific category. Let's take Chromium for example, because there's a space shooter called Chromium and there's a browser called Chromium. Ah, Chromium BSU, but it has the wrong icon. Interesting. 
That's the Chromium browser icon. Let's see what we get if we go back to the main page. Okay, I think someone's made a mess there with Chromium BSU, but Chrome the browser is correct. That covers the major changes in Linux Mint 19, just taking a general look around the system. The application launcher is quite snappy. The categories change as I hover over them, and results appear from the searches immediately. It is a bit odd though when you add an application to your favourites, it does continue to keep growing and expanding the menu out. Hmm. I can't say I would have noticed this too much because I probably would have kept my favourites list a bit shorter, but I have seen some ridiculous size menus appear in the past. So yeah, that's just a bit of a, well, how it works really. In terms of pre-installed applications, it is fairly tight. It does have Redshift installed for reducing the amount of blue lights coming out of the monitor. Although that feature is starting to be built into various desktops nowadays. I have installed some applications on here. I suppose it is worth mentioning they've got GIMP pre-installed, Internet Browser of Choice is Firefox, they have the full suite of LibreOffice, VLC is the multimedia player, and Rhythmbox is the audio player. And yeah, that's about it for noticeable applications. And taking a final look at the system monitor, uh, memory crept up to 1.2 gig. Fair enough, I've had a few things open though. All in all, I am impressed now with Linux Mint. I like that they've changed their ethics on the updates and now displaying them all by default. And particularly because Linux Mint is a long-term support operating system, well, it's based on the long-term support version of Ubuntu, so it could be on your computer for anything up to five years. So yeah, you do kind of need to update the kernel at some point within that time because there have been some vulnerabilities in the past. The theming improvements look good, particularly to KDE applications, and the speed and responsiveness are much improved. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.